Hi, I'm Terry Monville, technical advisor at Gujan Brothers. This came to a really good advantage for my daughter when she crashed the lightning. She was down doing a regatta with some friends on a borrowed boat and uh, T-boned into another boat, causing quite a bit of damage to the bow. So I ended up getting a text with a picture of the bow smashed up and a message, nobody was hurt. <laughs> so I told her, don't worry about it, we can fix it when she gets home. And that's what we're doing. Before just removing all the damaged glass, I had to come up with a plan of how to fix it. The bow is a complicated shape with being wide flat on the top and rounded on the bottom. I ended up deciding to build a mold to put on the inside as a backer of the shape of the bow so I can lay the fiberglass in the same shape. Removed the hardware, took some of the broken up fiberglass and taped it back into a shape and then uh, foamed in the spots and used a fairing block to fair it in. And then we use some packing tape to hold everything in place in the shape and also acts as a mold release. So we can lay fiberglass over top of that and pop the shape right off. We use the plastic to cut patterns for the fiberglass to make the mold with. Cut those to shape and then I'll use those to cut the fiberglass to shape. Using the West System Epoxy I put a little bit of uh, 406 in it to lay down just a little bed to lay the fiberglass and then started wetting it out with just unthickened epoxy and built up my layers and let it cure out. I always decide to go larger than I think I'm going to need. It will need to be trimmed down. Not knowing how far I'm going to have to cut it back, it's always better to have something bigger. You can't go back and redo it. Um, and I put release fabric on the outside of it so that when we go back we remove the release fabric it's ready to bond to so we don't have to try to sand the thin laminate. So then we remove the release fabric, pop the mold off, and then remove the tape. And then we can start cutting away at the damaged fiberglass. And it's good to be conservative at this. So only cut back what you really need to cut off. Even if you gotta go back a couple of times, and you know, take a look at it, cut a little more. And then sometimes even fit the mold up just to get it to fit in better, you might cut a little bit more away. But we trim the mold back and uh, keep fitting it and then use strings to get it to fit in there and hold it in place. There's one way because it can't really access the inside. If you can get to the back side, a lot of times you can use 2x4 or something to prop it in there. Um, and it'll take a number of fits and trimmings to get it to fit correctly. Once you get it fit up correctly, then you need to sand and prep the inside to uh, get the epoxy to bond to the inside. As this will be a part of the structure once you're done because it's going to be left in place. And then we'll use 610 to help hold the mold in place. And then once we have that done, we'll grind back a 12 to 1 taper on the outside of the fiberglass. We do 12 times the thickness. And then uh, again, going with a clear plastic, we uh, create our patterns to cut the fiberglass for the repair. Once we get that finished up, use a little 406 mixed into the mixed epoxy to brush on the surface, fill in gaps and imperfections. And this will take care of any air voids or pockets uh, to lay the fiberglass on there so we get good contact all the way across the surface. Laying the fiberglass up, I alternate layers from port to starboard to help build the bow up. And then once the epoxy is partially cured, I'll use 407 mixed into the epoxy to put on a fairing layer because I know I'll have to sand it down some. After getting it sanded down for the first time, you can go back and sand any low spots for good adhesion. And I brush a coat of unthickened epoxy on just to coat the surface and then add another layer of fairing compound onto it. Then you can go to another final sand. After the final fairing sand, I had two coats of unthickened epoxy with gray pigment in it to help blend it in and sand that out for gel coat. And then once we get it sanded shaped up nice, tape it out for gel coat and then we spray the gel coat on. We work with just the gel coat over the patched area, let that tack up and then keep adding coats and blending it in further with a blending agent in the gel coat. I'd also like to thank Steve over at Mid-Michigan Fiberglass. He's the one who uh, matched up the color gel coat to get a nice blend and help me with some tips and tricks on getting it to look nice. After the gel coat cures, we do a wet sand, uh, working up to finer and finer grits, and then uh, we buff it out to help blend it in.
And you can see after uh, a nice buffing and some cleaning that the gel coat color is blended right in and you can't really see what the where the repair was done. So after this, all we have to do is put the Bauhar rear back on and it's ready to hit the water again this spring. <laughs> 